A terrible day all around at Bush Stadium on Monday, where the Cardinals almost had a perfect game thrown against them and lost one of the most important pieces to the team's success. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked on Cardinals, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast. You can find us on YouTube. If you haven't done that, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. That way you can interact with us, hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Now, today's episode is being brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. And when you enter promo code locked on MLB, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler. With every order, I've got one myself. I don't have it in the in the room right now. It's out there, but uh, it's going to be huge for when we go floating and stuff this summer. You got to have that Yeti style tumbler, and why not get a free one from Bird Dogs? So uh, be sure to check that out. BirdDogs.com slash locked on MLB. So the St. Louis Cardinals had one of their worst performances of 2023 on Monday against the Kansas City Royals. Out of all people, that was the shocking part. Uh, there really wasn't a whole lot to like about this game. If you're a Cardinals fan, if you're a Royals fan, you had a blasty blast, right? It was great. But if you're a Cardinals fan, I don't know. I guess the weather was nice. You could be happy about that. Bright and sunny on a Monday. But what we saw on the field yesterday was uh, a team just going through the motions. It was a team that um, is no longer limping (laughs) to the finish line of this 19 game stretch, but they are crawling to the finish line better yet they're kind of like dragging themselves like like a zombie in a horror movie you know what i'm talking about where like the zombies legs are gone or they don't work anymore but it's still technically alive and it's using its arms to like drag its remaining torso over towards the victim to try to take a bite out of them that's kind of where we are with the Cardinals at this moment. And I mentioned in my post-game video that I uploaded, which we do for almost every single game. Uh, sometimes on the weekends, we don't have a chance to do it. But uh, for the most part, we upload a video after every game. So uh, if you haven't seen those, uh, you can view them on YouTube. Just go into the short section. They're all there for you if you want to check them out. And uh, I mentioned this yesterday in the video that I, I felt bad for the fans yesterday. I really did. Uh, you know, families who spent their hard-earned money to, to bring the family, to bring the crew out to the ball game, expecting to see their heroes like Nolan Arnato and Paul Goldschmidt and others play a baseball game. And instead, we're treated to a, a really ugly and boring offensive performance. Like, it was dull. And that's not even the worst part. The worst part is that they lost Lars Newtbar early in the game to back spasms. Okay? That's the worst part about not losing the game. That stinks, sure. But losing Lars Newtbar kind of a big deal in the second inning uh new goes to make an outstanding leaping catch like it is fantastic very athletic of him does that in center field and he and he slams against the wall seems okay initially you know the impact when you hit something like an outfield wall i don't know how many of you have actually done that before but when you hit it like your whole body just jars like you just feel it all over the place so initially i'm sure he thought he was he was fine. But as the game moved on, I'm sure things stiffened up a little bit. And um, in the third inning, that's when he's chasing after another fly ball in the gap towards right field, when he kind of pulls up and he just, he crumbles on the warning track. It looked like a sniper took him out or something. And he gets up, dusts himself off, but he's clearly walking gingerly, ends up being removed from the game. So it, it was an ugly scene. You didn't like it. You're like, oh gosh. Lars Newbar injured, but the fact that he walked off under his own power and although he was very slowly doing it makes you think that it wasn't going to be anything too serious. And afterwards the diagnosis was announced that 
it was lower back spasms. He's listed as day-to-day. So good news is it's not anything too serious. At least it doesn't appear to be at this moment. Bad news is you've now lost new bar for the foreseeable future. How long he'll be out, we don't know. Again, day-to-day. Um, I've never had back spasms. I've been lucky enough in my life that I haven't really had any back issues whatsoever. So I don't know exactly what it feels like to go through them. I, I've been told that it's like a bolt of lightning <laughs> going through your back when it occurs. So obviously it's no picnic to have these. Um, a back spasm, for those of you who are unaware, I Googled this. Sudden tightness and pain in your back muscles. It may happen from overuse or injury. Things like sleeping in an awkward way, bending, lifting, standing, or sitting can sometimes cause a spasm, but the cause isn't always clear. Now, my wife has back issues um, where where she says it like, oh, I can, I can feel it where my back's about to go out. I don't know what the hell that means. I really don't. But... It sounds like she might be dealing with spasms from time to time. And I, I can tell you this much. It clears up in a day or two most of the time, but sometimes it lingers on for about a week. Granted, she's not a professional ball player. She doesn't have, you know, the trainers and the equipment to get her feeling better quicker. But at the same time, she's kind of a tough cookie. I'll give her I'll give her props. And she's certainly in a lot of pain a lot of the time there. So um, if that's what Lars is dealing with, then... You know, it, it could be a few days, which, you know, we've got the two days off on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, so that's good for Newt. Gives him a, a couple of days to uh, heal. I would not expect him in the lineup on Tuesday. I don't see why you would push him and try to put him out there. But that's kind of a big problem for an offense that is seemingly running on empty right now. You lose your leadoff man, your catalyst, and uh, to get things going against that opposition. But also your starting center fielder. And it's amazing how goofy this season has been so far for the Cardinals. Because remember, at the start of this year, we had too many good outfielders. We didn't know what to do with the ball. You had Tyler O'Neill, Lars Newbar, Dylan Carlson, Jordan Walker, Alec Burleson, Juan Yepes, Moises Gomez. How are we going to get them all to play? They're all so good. How are we going to do this? We've got like two levels of starting outfielders. We're swimming in outfielders. And now four of those top six are not even available to play. You know, you got O'Neal, Lars, Dylan. They're all done right now because of injuries. Jordan's down at Memphis. He's not coming up. You've had to use Tommy Edmond and Brendan Donovan in the outfield. You've had to call up Oscar Mercado, who had a couple of nice games against the Dodgers, and that was great, but he has made some ugly mistakes in the outfield. Like, silly one. Okay, the ball that goes off his glove into the first row for a home run in Cincinnati silly right but the ones where he's charging on the ball and he screws that up and the guys get an extra base that cannot happen okay that can't happen it's happened a couple times so he hasn't been that great defensively the way we thought he was going to be he looks overmatched on a daily basis at the plate it's a reason why he's more of a triple a guy than a major league baseball player uh in my opinion alec burleson has kind of been a disappointment at the plate You see his numbers, 234, four long flies, 14 RBIs, and 128 at-bats. And you're like, well, they're not horrible numbers, right? But we've seen him here and there. He hits the ball hard, right? You're sick of hearing that, right? He's he's got this max velocity that's so great or whatever, and it goes right at people, and it's bummer luck. But at the same time, I've never seen him, like, go on a stretch where he just looks locked in. You know how ballplayers will have those days where it's, like, over a six-game stretch, He's got two hits, four hits, two hits, one hit, three hits. You know, it never has done that. Uh, He has had only four games this year where he's actually had multiple hits in it. So he's usually kind of a one for four kind of guy. And he just doesn't seem all that clutch. And maybe it's just me, but I haven't been all that impressed with him. I'm sorry. I haven't. He looks like a backup outfielder. Uh, Juan Yepes has been going up and down with Memphis. So I'm sure it's hard for him to get any consistency going at all. And let, let's just be nice and say that both of them aren't exactly the most graceful looking outfielders. Uh, when you see them go after a fly ball, it really makes you appreciate how smooth guys like Carlson and O'Neill, Bader when he was here, Newbar, uh, how smooth they are out in the outfield and how important they are to this team and the overall defense. Because, you know, Burleson and Yepes are not getting to certain balls in the gaps that those other guys are going to get to just the way it is. 
I got called out by someone in the uh, comment section from yesterday's show because I mentioned that one of the things that the team was able to avoid over this 19-game stretch was a lot of injuries. Clearly, I jinxed that and uh, set them up for certain doom. So I, I do apologize to the team, to the fans, to Lars himself for my careless act of bringing that up. My bad. Um, as far as return times for O'Neill and Carlson, Carlson, who sprained his left ankle on May 14th while leaving the batter's box on a single to right field, it didn't look as bad when it happened. I, like I told you before, I thought he initially hurt his Achilles, and that's what I was concerned about when they said he rolled his ankle, sprained ankle. I did not think he was going to be out this long, but uh, apparently he's making progress. Uh, began a running program, resumed hitting from the left side of the plate on Monday. Uh, by the time he's fully ready to play again after working in the cage and doing defensive drills, he will likely need a two- or three-game rehab stand, either with AAA or AA, uh, before he joins the Cardinals again. So he's still a little bit ways away. Uh, O'Neal, not even close, still being bothered by discomfort in his lower, his lower back. They continue to say that it's just a strain. There's no structural damage, but it is very, very odd that it's taking this long without any sort of progress whatsoever. It seems like every time they start to get him going again in baseball activities that he pulls up lame. He's like, no, it's still, it's still not feeling right. And, it, and it's a bummer. Not that he was producing all that much when he was playing, but still, you still have that hope, right? That Tyler O'Neill will turn things around. He just looks like a guy who can turn things around. We've seen him be very good. And I mean, he can't even get on the field. And I've seen some people say they need to call up Walker, but that's not going to happen right now. Um, he's just starting to produce at Memphis. They're going to take their time with them. They're not going to rush him. Again, the biggest screw up with Walker this year was the fact that they kept him on the opening day roster to begin with. They should have just had him down in Memphis to start, and then maybe he'd be ready to come up at this time. But um, they screwed that up, and I think they've admitted that. Uh, but he's not coming up anytime soon. So this is kind of where we're at. Good thing we got a couple games, uh, a couple days off, I should say, uh, Wednesday and Thursday to kind of give these time these guys some time to to heal up. Uh, I want to get into some fan reactions from yesterday's game because yesterday's game was rough to watch, and some of the uh, some of our locked on Cardinals fans were actually in attendance. So uh, I've got their their thoughts on how things were at Bush Stadium yesterday. We'll do that next here on Locked On Cardinals. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. You kidding me? That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Now, the NBA Finals, they're all set and ready to go. It's a very much a, a David and Goliath kind of battle as far as seedings go, I should say, because there's been nothing... David about <laughs> what the Miami Heat have done so far in the playoffs. You've got the number one seed Denver Nuggets led by the Joker, Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray going up against the Miami Heat who, who were a play-in team and then became a number eight seed and have clawed their way to the finals led by Jimmy Butler. Uh, on paper, the Nuggets should wipe the floor with Miami, but that's probably not going to happen if you've watched any of these games. The Miami Heat have just been on a roll. And uh, they've taken down every single team they've met along the way, even the number one seed uh, in the East, the Milwaukee Bucks. Kind of embarrassed them. Should be a fun series to watch. Finals usually are. And to make it more fun and win some money in the process. While you're watching, make sure you get on that FanDuel app, play some bets, safe, secure app. Don't have to worry about it. No concerns there. Uh, they got new promotions every day. Plus, you get paid instantly. There's no waiting around. When you win your bet, you get paid. Simple. Doesn't take long. No better place, no better place to actually place a bet during all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. <clears throat> Cardinals are at home against the Royals again tonight, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. My everydayers know that we like to get as much listener interaction into the show as possible, especially when things kind of slow down a little bit. 
which they're going to over the next couple of days. So um, I'm going to I'm going to be using a lot of the stuff that we go back and forth together on uh, on YouTube, like down in the comments section. We're all chit chatting all the time and I love it. And um, I love the fact that, uh, you know, I want the fans voice to be heard. What are you guys saying? Positive, negative, whatever you're feeling. Let's get it out there and have our own little group therapy session. So I want to start with what happened yesterday where the Royals were doing a bullpen game. And I don't know how many bullpen games the Cardinals have had against them. The other one that I remember was the Milwaukee Brewers bullpen game. And I feel like they dominated the Cardinals in that one too. I don't know what it is about those games that they're having troubles with, but it really didn't end up being a bullpen game at all. It ended up being the Mike Myers show. Yes, the same pitcher who was once with the Cardinals dominated his former team on Monday. Two hits over six innings. Those two hits coming in the eighth inning. They were also the first base runners that the Cardinals had as the starter, Josh Stallmont, and then Myers combined for a perfect game until the eighth inning. And it was horrible to watch as a Cardinals fan. And I, I, like I said, I can't even imagine what it was like to be in the stands yesterday, having to watch the team just flail away. And um, a couple of people that were at the game dropped a few comments here. So let's get into them. Uh, Rod Brock says the Cardinals have lots of pop-ups falling in very slow outfield. We faced a pitcher today that Wayno trained and John Moe threw away player after player. John Moe has given away. Well, thanks for the comment, Rod. Appreciate you as always. And yeah, it's easy to go back and point out the players that the Cardinals seemingly gave up on. Heck, I admittedly, I am still seething about Odolis Garcia. Odolis Garcia is having this tremendous year. He's had three tremendous years since the Cardinals basically just gave him up for nothing. You know? Um, and, and that's the one that upsets me. It upsets me more than... The trades with the Rosarena, Alcantara, Gallon. I mean, those deals stink too in looking back at it in hindsight. But at least in those trades, you got things in return. You know, you got Marcelo Zuna, who you thought was going to be this key cog in your lineup and do the things that he had just done for Miami. And it didn't happen. It didn't work out. Um, Libertor. Got him in return. Obviously, we, we've seen some uh, some positivity out of him so far this year. It wasn't an empty deal with those guys. Where the, the Garcia move was for cash considerations. And yeah, here's the thing. He got DFA'd by the Rangers after that trade. Got DFA'd. And then they brought him back for spring training. So anyone could have had him. So it appears everyone in the league is stupid, not just the Cardinals. It's screwed up in evaluating his talent. But gosh, I it just drives me nuts. It drives me nuts, that particular one. Hitting 244 right now, 14 home runs, 49 RBIs, which leads all of baseball in ribbies for the first place Rangers. Just having a heck of a year. Strikes out a lot. And that's really his only problem. Cash considerations. Uh, as for Myers, um, I can't really get mad at them for giving up on Myers. Are you really upset about this? Myers was not that great when he was in St. Louis. Okay. 0-1, 6.63 ERA in 2019 before being claimed off waivers by the Angels, who then DFA'd him and brought him back and sent him down. And like, he's been all over the place. Had a 6.88 ERA and eight starts at AAA this year before the Royals brought him up to the active roster. So what we saw yesterday and i know he had a good game before this too those are the anomalies that's not normally what mike myers does i mean when you're at triple a your era your era is almost seven you can't say that you thought this is what you were going to get out of him the way he pitched yesterday against the cardinals so i wouldn't say losing myers was a big loss but man he sure shoved it to the cardinals right in their tailpipe yesterday didn't he uh, Grayson says I was there and it was okay. Here's the section we're going to get into with people where they were actually at the game. Grayson says I was there and it was brutal. Seth B says I was there watching. It was brutally frustrating. Tim McLean says didn't even try. Robert Hardman says they are playing like the bad news bears. Jay Boak team is unwatchable. No offense, no pen, etc. I know it's hard to be positive after what we saw yesterday. I know the, the offense has been terrible 
over the last few games. The, the current streaks for six of the Cardinals regulars combined add up to 13 hits and 141 at bats. That's a 92 batting average. In addition to Arenado's three for 23, Contreras, one of 28. D. Young is 0 for his last 20. Edmund, four for his last 29. Nolan Gorman, five for his last 31. Newt Bar, before he got hurt, 0 for his last 10. Now he's got back spasms. Like, I get it. It's not fun to watch. You know, I was at all four games in Cincinnati, and I saw one game that was fun to watch. Uh, they win two of them, but only one of them was all that much fun to watch. Like, it, it's tough right now. But I do want to say this. For all the negativity that we throw at these guys right now, and they deserve it at the moment because they're not performing. But also understand in the month of May, the team is 14 and 13. Okay? That's after going 10 and 19 to start the year. Now, 14 and 13 doesn't sound all that great either. I understand that. But also remember... That's what they've done in the month of May so far. And they lost their first five games in May. Okay. That was the, the part of the, the losing streak, the eight game losing streak. May 7th is when they snapped that losing streak. Since then, they're 14 and eight. That's 636 winning percentage. That's really good. <laughs> that is, that'll put you in first place in most divisions. And they're 11 and seven during this 19 game stretch which I would think you can't be too disappointed about. I, I, I'm not disappointed about it. The team appears headed in the right direction. It does. And they're not really trying to use this 19 games in a row being tired thing as an excuse. I'm using it because I know it's happening. I know that's why they're not performing right now. But they're not saying that in interviews. According to Rob Rains at stlsportspage.com, Nolan Arnato spoke with him after the game said, there's no excuse. Every other team goes through the same thing. We've just got to keep grinding. 19 games in a row. We knew this was coming. It is what it is. Paul Goldschmidt also chimes in saying, we're used to it. We know how to play. It's part of the schedule. We just try to go out there and have good at bats. We just couldn't get anything going today. I will say one thing that I wish we could see more of, and I know Contreras has been um, in a bit of a slump, but I need more pizzazz out of these guys. Like They're so boring. Like even Lars Newbar this year. Lars Newbar, one of the more excitable players on the roster, right? He was the guy with the pepper grinder doing his thing in Japan. And last year, he was always banging on stuff and going wild. And I'm just not seeing that energy out of these guys, like ever. Like I, I, I want to see more of it. I need, I don't, I don't know if they've been told to tame it down or something, but I don't like it. Like I want to see like villain Willie doing the stuff with the crowd and uh, running around the bases and screaming and yelling again. Hard to do that when you're not hitting, but at the same time, I just, I need more. Ugh, I just want more of that. I need more. Ex be excited about playing the game of baseball. I need to see more of it. And they all just look like they've been hit over the head with a baseball bat. They just all look like just zombies right now. And again, I think it has to do with this 19 game stretch. And I think we're going to see a different team in a few days uh, when they get back from this uh, quick little two day off break. Uh, they're going to take on for a former Cy Young award winner tonight. At Bush Stadium, we're going to preview that game next on Locked on Cardinals. The Cardinals send Miles Michaelis to the bump tonight against the Royals. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Michaelis has been excellent over his last three outings, going six innings, then seven, then seven again, while picking up two wins. He allowed just four earned runs in those three starts. Three of those were against the Dodgers where he got a no decision, but the team still won 6-5, which is most important. Uh, his last appearance, he fired seven shutout innings in Cincinnati to help eke out that 2-1 to one win. So he's the perfect guy to be on the mound tonight at Bush where the team needs someone to, to chew innings and keep the score low. And with the offense struggling as bad as it is and will likely be without Newt Bar, they need somebody to, to keep the Royals' bats quiet. Normally they are quiet. Woke up a bit yesterday and had their way with the Cardinal staff, but uh, hopefully things will be different tonight. On the other side of things, Zach Rinke will be on the mound for the Royals, the Cy Young Award winner from back in 2009. He's a six-time All-Star, but he's now 39 years old. He's going to be 40, 40 later this year. Comes in with a 1-5 in five record, ERA of 4.55, but not so fast. Before we get excited, he really hasn't pitched all that bad in the month of May where he's just 1-1 one in one five starts. 
and his ERA, 2.73. And another bummer about losing Newt for tonight's game. If he's not in the lineup, I haven't seen a lineup yet, but if he's not in there tonight, lefties hit Grinky way better than the right-handers do. Uh, lefties are batting 303 with six home runs off of them in, uh, what is that, 99 at-bats, while righties are batting 240 with four home runs. So lefties, much better, much better. And despite those splits, well, I was looking at the um, – who might be starting tonight, uh, despite those splits, someone who's had some decent success against him for the Cardinals are actually a few of the right-handers, your big guys. Arenado's hitting 275 off of him in 80 at-bats. Probably saw a lot of him in Arizona when uh, Arenado was with Colorado. Same thing for Goldie. Goldie, 276, two home runs in 29 at-bats. Wilson Contreras has two home runs off of him in just four at-bats. So maybe we can um, see some fireworks tonight, courtesy of the, the Cardinals' offense, hopefully. That'd be nice to end this stretch with a, a nice, solid victory, something like a 6-3 win. That's what I'm shooting for tonight. But um, hopefully they can end this stretch of games with uh, with a win. You know, have a have a nice smile on your face while you while you relax for the next couple of days. So uh, we'll see what happens. Want to thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast for tonight's game against the Royals. With SiriusXM on the SXM app, just search Cardinals first pitch, 645 St. Louis time. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube to help our channel and love for the Cardinals grow. You are the best fans in baseball for a reason, and I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.